brief update on what's transpiring here in South Africa. And I hope at some point we can have a catching up from South Africa with some of our South African teams and colleagues, because it is a very interesting place. I believe the way that South Africa is going is the way most of, much of the rest Western world, including the United States, is going. It's just that South Africa is further down the path. Be that as it may, in this week, the BRICS conference is happening. And Macron from France, who already signed the 51-point agreement with China, announced that he would not support any position in defense of Taiwan. Uh, he would not stand with the United States or with any of the regional allies in the Pacific region. France has no problem with Chinese policy towards Taiwan. That's just France. Um, what do you expect from France, the country that chose the Vichy government when the British were fighting at Dunkirk and had 66 divisions and wouldn't fight Hitler. Um, it, it, some French did, but the Vichy certainly did not. Or that pulled out of NATO, pulled its troops out of NATO and hit on back of the Americans and British during the Cold War. Well, this is of course is just France being France in the opinion of many people. But Macron has made overtures towards BRICS. Now, how that would juxtapose itself with the fact that France is committed to the Euro I'm not exactly sure at this point, but it would show that BRICS is not going to be a currency so much as an exchange rate mechanism in the short term. Um, it's going to be a frog in boiling water, but Macron is making overtures. He also did a gas deal with China priced in yuan, not dollars, not in euros. <laughs> you think he would price it in euros in his, his own European currency, but he didn't. He pandered to China, and he's pandered to China over Taiwan, and now he's pandering to China again over BRICS. The yuan is in trouble, as is the ruble. The yuan is in trouble, as is the ruble. Hence, Russia and China both have an incentive to move towards another mechanism other than the euro dollar as the basis of the world currency reserve. Additionally, Mexico is being engaged, much the same as the BRICS countries want South Africa because it has gold. They want Mexico because it has silver. Mexico is a silver-rich country. Um, the implications of this for the United States economically, having Mexico in BRICS would be absolutely stupendous, but it's what is happening. And it would not be happening in the way or to the degree or at the speed it is, had it not been for the irresponsible financial, fiscal and economic policies of the Biden or the Joe Obama administration, Janice Yellen, Powers, the Fed, et cetera, with their quantitative easing, with their printing money like there's no tomorrow, and of course, with inhibiting oil production. Um, if you're going to take the United States off of the Saudi Arabian dependency, to, for the petrodollar's value based on oil, you can simply replace it with the American oil production. But Biden is against that as well. He thinks he's moving in a green direction, which is technologically impossible, as was already proven in Germany. So the developments with Mexico and France, added to the developments with Saudi Arabia, are quite, quite concerning for the future of the dollar and for the future of the United States. It is only the fact that all of these countries themselves, Russia and China, are in trouble, as are their currencies, and South Africa's economy is, is hideous. India is the wild card in all of this. The United States, in the eyes of Putin, defaulted on treasury bills by freezing Russian holdings of, of treasury bills and then, of course, blocking Russia from the SWIFT system, block, blocking Russia from the SWIFT system, SWIFT system. This is being represented in BRICS as what Nixon did when the goal was demanding gold for the US dollar and Nixon went off the gold standard. Essentially, the goal said America was defaulting on the dollar, which they replaced with, with, with Saudi oil. Well, now the Saudi oil is, is, is moving away. The Saudis are selling oil and want to China. What is going to come next? They want it to be something that will emerge out of BRICS. These events taking place this week in South Africa, where I am, 
require a considerable amount of prayer, and they can have long range repercussions for the United States particularly and for the global economy. This is like something that will be on the scale of what happened at Brenton Woods or what happened in 1970 with mm -hmm. Nixon. Um, that's, it's of that magnitude. Let's move on very quickly also. Biden is holding joint security talks. I got five minutes. Joint security talks with Korea and Japan. Um, we have to remember something. Not only Australia, but Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan have the capacity to develop weapons-grade plutonium and have sufficient uranium uh, enrichment capacity to make weapons-grade fissionable material within a year. They can become independent nuclear powers within a year. Japan and South Korea have effectively operated under the US nuclear umbrella until now. They see how the United States has backed away from Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia has moved closer to China. This scares them. It certainly scares Japan and it scares Taiwan. I've been saying for several years, you can see a nuclear armament in the Western Pacific in the Western Pacific. Um, the outcome of these talks will be interesting to see. I'm not putting a lot of emphasis on it because Australia is not participating in it, neither is Taiwan. However, it does show the way things are going. I have no doubt that Japan and Taiwan, if forced to, will develop their own nuclear deterrent. Finally, Australia, the new policies of Wong and the Australian government uh, is, towards Israel is shocking. This is a left-wing government. It's not just what's taking place in Victoria with David Andrews. It's what's taking place in Canberra. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. As a man who loves Australia, I no longer like the Wallabies, the rugby team. I used to love Matthew Burke, who was my favorite kicker of all time. After what they did to Israel, not the nation Israel, but the player Israel, because he spoke up on homosexuality. Davey, what's Israel's second name again? Uh, uh, sorry, Jacob? They, Israel, the, the, the rugby player who they blackballed. Oh, Israel Falau. Yeah, the way that man was treated was shameful and disgusting. Australia is going against believers, now it's going against Israel. Um, and this is not good for Australia. Interestingly, Argentina, which has a gross history of anti-Semitism, has a potential presidential candidate, has a potential, as a presidential candidate, a, a potential president who is very pro-Israel and who wants to move the, Australia, the uh, Argentine embassy to Jerusalem. So while Australia is moving against Israel, Argentina may be moving closer. I pray that happens. Finally, Brian Houston was found not guilty of not reporting his pedophile father to the police. But the court affirmed what the Royal Commission affirmed. He actually did it. He failed to report this sex crime to the police. The verdict said he was not guilty because he had what the court considered to be a sufficient reason for not doing so. His claim was that the victim didn't want it to happen, so he didn't report it because the victim didn't want it to happen. But the, but, but the verdict said he's not guilty on that basis. The verdict didn't say he didn't do it. He, as the Royal Commission said, he did do it. So that is what Hillsong has come to. But Brian Houston has had the audacity to come out and say he was being persecuted. He was being persecuted. The audacity of that man is unbelievable. The events in Australia this week are quite troubling. Maybe Davey would like to comment further. Finally, the F-16, the first time fighter aircraft. Now, the F-16 is not an F-35 or an F-22, but it is a good plane. It is being provided to the Ukraine. I don't know how much of a game changer it's going to be, 
What I do know is the Ukraine has turned out to be a humiliation and a catastrophe for Putin, but an absolute decimation, an absolute holocaust for the Ukraine. Please, God, may this thing end. So it is. I hope to join you next week when I'm back in Europe and Britain for a full session. Thank you so much, and God bless, and please keep South Africa in prayer. 27, 28,000 people murdered last year.